Welcome to Biochem Insights with Dr. Shefali. In this video, we are going to talk about enzyme topoisomerase, their types and functions, and topoisomerase inhibitors. So we already know that during replication, the enzyme helicase unwinds the double-stranded DNA at the replication fork to allow the replication machinery to access the template strand for the replication process to proceed continuously and uninterrupted. Now, as the DNA is opened up, the DNA double helix ahead of the replication fork experience torsional stress that leads to supercoils called as positive supercoils. Now, if these supercoils are not removed, they can create excessive torsional strain that makes it difficult for the replication machinery to continue unwinding the DNA. In this case, two possibilities are there. Either this leads the replication process to stop or it may lead to incomplete replication. So in order to solve the problem of positive supercoils, there is a group of special enzymes called topoisomerases for removing supercoils. Now, how do they do it? How do topoisomerases remove supercoils? So topoisomerases show nucleus and ligase activity by which first they cut the coiled DNA strand and then rejoins the relaxed DNA strand so that the process of replication is continuous and uninterrupted. We will understand this in just a bit. Now there are two types of DNA topoisomerases. Type 1 DNA topoisomerase and type 2 DNA topoisomerase. Let's see how these two topoisomerase work differently from one another. So suppose this is the coil DNA strand and I have told you that topoisomerase show nuclease and ligase activities. So now type 1 topoisomerase first show the nucleus activity and will make nick or cut in one of the DNA strands. So here it cuts the red strand and then passes the other strand which is the intact one. Here the intact strand is the blue one. So the blue strand passes through the red strand and thus coiling is removed. Now topoisomerase performs ligase activity and reseals the broken strand. Here in this process, type 1 DNA topoisomerase does not require ATP. So what I told you, how does DNA topoisomerase 1 re remove supercoils? So first showing the nucleus activity, DNA topoisomerase 1 makes a nick in one of the strands of the DNA molecule. Then the intact strand passes through the nick and finally showing the ligase activity, DNA topoisomerase 1 seals the broken strand. And I told you in this process, type 1 DNA topoisomerase does not require ATP. Now, let's see how type 2 DNA topoisomerase works. So, this is the coiled DNA strand. Now, type 2 DNA topoisomerase first shows the nuclease activity and cut both the DNA strands. After which, Another strand of DNA passes through the gap and creates something called negative supercoils which relaxes the coiled DNA strands. DNA topoisomerase 2 now shows ligase activity and reseals the broken strand. And in this process, type 2 DNA topoisomerase requires energy in the form of ATP. And the examples of type 2 DNA topoisomerase are DNA gyrase and topoisomerase 4. So, how type 2 DNA topoisomerase works? First, type 2 DNA topoisomerase cleaves both the strands of DNA. It allows another segment of DNA to pass through the break. It then reseals the break and it requires energy in the form of ATP to perform this function. And the example of type 2 DNA topoisomerase I told is DNA gyrase and topoisomerase 4. Now, what is the difference between type 1 and type 2 DNA topoisomerase? So, if you remember, type 1 DNA topoisomerase cuts only one of the DNA strand 
and it does not require ATP to perform the nucleus and ligase activities. Whereas type 2 DNA topoisomerase cuts both the DNA strands and it requires energy in the form of ATP to perform this nucleus and ligase activities. Now the eukaryotic cells have both type 1 and type 2 DNA topoisomerases. So what's the clinical application of topoisomerases? So there are certain drugs that are used to target on topoisomerases and they are called topoisomerase inhibitors. Now I want you to think about why do we want to target this enzyme in eukaryotic cells when it is important for DNA replication? Because if these enzymes aren't working, DNA replication won't occur, right? So why do we need topoisomerase inhibitors? In what condition? So we need topoisomerase inhibitors if the eukaryotic cells become cancerous. As you know that cancer cells are not like normal cells. They keep replicating, keep dividing and don't know when to stop replicating and when to die. So we can use some drugs that target the topoisomerase in cancer cells and stop them from replicating. So for type 1 topoisomerase, the cancer drug that we use are irinotecan and topotecan, which are obviously chemotherapeutic drugs that inhibit topoisomerase 1 in cancer cells. And for type 2 topoisomerase in eukaryotic cells, the inhibitor drugs are etoposide and tenoposides. Now coming to prokaryotic cells. Prokaryotic cells have only type 2 topoisomerase enzymes. Now suppose you are infected by a bacteria and that bacteria reaches your lungs and infect your lungs by keep replicating and replicating. What we can do? We can target type 2 topoisomerase and prevent the replication process of bacteria in the lungs. Yes. So in bacterial infection, we use the drug called fluoroquinolones. You must have heard of ciprofloxacin, levofloxacin, moxifloxacin. Yeah, these are topoisomerase inhibitors. So this way, using topoisomerase inhibitors, we can stop the replication in eukaryotic cells like cancer cells and prokaryotic bacterial cells. So this is all about enzyme topoisomerases, their types, functions and topoisomerase inhibitors.